Jezebel Ray and her hair have died. She run away. Run away, running from God, painted her face, making escape. But God rose a one man was called Jehu. And Jehu was out as under, under God's direction to find God's enemies. Went out and looking, searching, and then Jezebel was upstairs on the high building and saw him coming. And she wanted to know if peace was in her town. So she cried, Ah, Zimri, peace. And although she was spaded, but her voice didn't change. The prophet knew her. The prophet said, If there's anybody up here on God's side, throw Jezebel down. And that's tough. For you to lift up a woman and throw her through a window, that's not easy to do. <laughs> That would be hard for me. That would be really hard for me. Had I been really led by the Lord. <laughs> and I tell you, God would really lead me. For me to take a woman from upstairs and throw her through the window, God would have to really tranquilize me and say, Yes, you're dead in your mind, but your hands are moving. <laughs> I can't find myself doing it. But there were some people on God's side. And they grabbed Jezebel as much as she was kicking and screaming. They threw her through the window. And she hit the floor. And she died. And Jehu looked and saw that she was dead, went to get something to eat. When he came back, her body was eaten. God got some big dogs around. They found only the palms of her hands. That's all that was left of her. Because God said, Dog shall eat Jezebel's flesh. Amen, somebody. This time, Jeremiah being locked up in prison. There are no cell phones and no internet. There were no wireless transmission. There were no text messaging. There were no voicemails. God said, you have to write down what I tell you. Jeremiah called Baruch, the scribe, and he dictated to him what he should write. Then he said, take it and read it into the temple, thus said the Lord. Because God is making every effort to get a word to Israel. The message was read and basically received by the people. But King Jehoiakim was disturbed by the word from the prophet. They didn't like him. And so after the word were written and were told to be put away, Jehoiakim came and quiet for the scrolls. Got them and burned them. But God said, I'm going to give them to you again, Jeremiah. Because the same God who gave it once can give it again. He's got a perfect mind. Come on, somebody. The same God who said it yesterday, he can say it the same way again tomorrow. Amen, somebody? The same God who spoke yesterday will speak again today and will speak again tomorrow and will say the same things because he is God. Yes. You see, you can't destroy what God has given because he's eternal, he is the eternal source. Yes. Yes. Jeremiah was called the weeping prophet. So called, well known, in chapter 9, 1, he said, Oh, that my head were waters, and my eyes a fountain of tears, that I might 
I weep day and night for the slain of the daughter of my people. He got to the point, been through so much. Let me just inform you who've been going through things because of the name of the Lord. Amen. Let me just re remind and encourage you who have been through things because of your testimony. Amen. Because of what you say about the Lord whom you know personally. Amen. Don't let yourself get the better of you. Don't let your circumstances detour you or derail you. Amen. Still trust in the Lord even Amen. when you're going through the Amen. waters. Amen. Even when you're going through the fire, still trust Him who is the consuming fire. Amen. Come on, son. When you're going through the valleys of the shadow of death, Amen. still I can trust in the Son and say, I know He will guide me. He has redeemed me and I am His child. When the going gets rough and the mountains are high to climb, still trust him. Hallelujah. He said, Oh, that I have tears enough. He got to the point where self told him he's had enough. He said, said to him, Jeremiah, as much as you have been called, ordained, appointed, anointed, and sent by God, but there is a time when you've had enough. That's what he said to him. He'd suffered enough being God's voice. In chapter 20, he began to talk to himself. And he developed the audacity to confront God in crying about his experience. And so in chapter 20, verse 7, he said, Oh Lord, thou hast deceived me, and I was deceived. In other words, I knew what Israel was like. I should never. Make you convince me to go to them. In other words, I didn't fire you. Listen to all the things you told me. Oh yeah, before I was my mother who I was, was sanctified and ordained and, and now you're working my mother and I shouldn't be afraid of their faces and all these wonderful things you told me. I was deceived. <laughs> And he said, I want to see because you're stronger than me. Yes. <laughs> and you prevail over me. Yes. I am in the region every day I become a laughing stock. Yes. Everybody yes. mock me. Yes. For since I spake, I cried out, I cried violence and spoil. Because the word of the Lord was made a reproach unto me and the region daily. And now, Lord, I found myself in a crucial position. He said, then I said, based on what I've been experiencing, I will not make mention of him not speak anymore in his name does anybody ever get to that may I go back to church may I sing again may I go back to no choir come on with me somebody may I try no worship team again is anybody here they're not testifying. They're not going back into the kitchen. Remember, <laughs> make them take them kitchen. Everybody here? Oh, good Lord. Can I talk to somebody here? Then I said, I will not make mention of him. Shut up. 
to stay in your house. When it's burning outside, you might be able to ignore it. But when it's, when it's in your bones, no sir, no sir, no sir, no sir. The fire is consuming. It destroys pride. It soothes my frustration. It restores my hope. It shakes my instability. Somebody give me praise in this house.